Introduction The term independent filmmaking applies to any film that is made outside of a major studio system. You wouldn't look at a Disney film and consider it to be an indie film, as it has a massive name behind it and has been produced by a conglomerate organization that owns many other franchises, estates, and much more. Independent filmmaking is all about creating something outside of the mainstream blockbuster channels, and with that often means having a much smaller budget and a lot more to lose if it goes wrong, in terms of your time and resources. Financially, your losses would be smaller than that of a Disney failure, but the personal loss is greater. Indie itself is a term that has been coined by filmmakers, film critics, and audience members alike to describe this, but there's much more to the label than simply that. Indie films themselves can even be, and have been, considered a genre in themselves, often working to similar size budgets, using similar locations as costs need to be kept to a minimum, and often being story-centric, homing in on character and plot development over costly CGI and impressive set pieces. In independent, mainstream, and in-between, how and why indie films have become their own genre, Carrie Zabo describes the rise of independence in the film industry, highlighting the anti-Hollywood approach to filmmaking that emerged and how the definition of the term independent really wasn't as clear-cut as it is today. By the late 1950s, independent shifted to mean something else than what it meant 30 years prior. In 1956, 53% of films distributed by X Studios were deemed independent, since those major companies had not actually made the films, they only distributed them. Filmmakers with financial help from studios, who were directing and producing their own work, were still being considered independent. But really, just how independent was the production of those films, when you're relying on somebody else for the cash? Most people today would argue this point. Janet Wasco provides an insightful definition of independent filmmaking. Still, a very different approach to the topic today. It was obvious that, by the mid to late 50s, the term seemed to be open to interpretation, rather than having a fixed definition of what exactly independent really meant for the film industry. The independent producer included the single picture company, the small operator who made cheap quickies, and the established producer who continuously produced quality films at the major studios, or at their own studios. It was only by the early 1960s that the anti-Hollywood movement gained any traction. Zabo describes the emerging movement as something greater than the non-mainstream approaches that had previously been taken, calling it New American Cinema. All of a sudden, filmmakers were able to free themselves from the over-professionalism, the over-technicality, and the sometimes unjustifiable limitations set by big business and Hollywood. Creativity and freedom could finally be achieved in perfect harmony. They could now guide themselves using their experience and knowledge of the industry, rather than going exactly by the book, following exactly what an executive at a studio wanted the film to be. The filmmaker could throw those limitations out the window. Aspects such as improvised dialogue were more commonly used, with Americans adapting what they were seeing from French New Wave cinema. Handheld cameras were another aspect that the Americans were drawing inspiration from, utilizing it if it was to work effectively for their creative piece. Contemporary editing techniques from French New Wave were also implemented. Without the limitations that big business Hollywood had, independent filmmakers were able to try new things. An un-Hollywood aesthetic is what these filmmakers were striving to achieve, whether they achieved it by using purposely rough editing techniques, off-kilter characterization, quirky soundtrack choices, or even something else. American filmmakers of the time, the ones striving to achieve uniqueness, were living by the philosophy, do your own thing. And this point still stands today. Independent filmmaking has strived to achieve that vision ever since. Independent filmmakers dare to be different, opting to take an alternative approach, tackle subjects others may view as taboo, and make those surprising creative choices you're likely to never see from companies like Disney or Sony. Independent filmmakers should be visionaries if they are to succeed, as you won't get far trying to do a low-budget version of Spider-Man. Be bold, stand out, dare to be different and reach for the stars. But before you do, make sure you read this guide, as we hope it will be of great use to you as you begin your journey in the independent filmmaking business. Throughout this book, we'll cover all aspects of the independent filmmaking process, including what to expect afterwards and what you probably should consider when your film is done and distributed. We'll be taking an in-depth look 
at the following steps in the independent filmmaking process. The script. Without a good script, you're not going to find much success. Before you ever put a script into production, always make sure it's the best it can possibly be. And yes, that probably means sharing the script with more than just your friends and your parents. As harsh as it may sound, they are likely to lie to you, even if they think it's the worst thing they've ever read. We'll be taking a closer look at this in the upcoming chapter, The Script. So if you have areas of concern surrounding only the script or you'd just like to find out more, skip ahead. Pre-production. Covering various aspects before you hit the record button. This can be a daunting phase of the independent filmmaking process, as it all starts to feel real. That's because it is. You're going to be making a movie soon. Production. You've hit the record button, and you're well on your way to creating something fantastic. Or at least, you hope you are. In this section of the book, we'll take a look at the various aspects of the production phase that you need to get spot on, including what to expect and the potential problems that may arise. Post-production. Everything from editing to the final cut. The hard part is done by this point, right? Wrong. Every step of the process is important. Read more to find out why. What comes next? Not only are we covering what exactly you should expect from the independent filmmaking process, but we'll be taking a look at what to do after you've finished and distributed your first indie film. If that all sounds like your cup of tea, or coffee if that's what you're into. Enjoy the book and make the most of the information. Oh, and if you happen to make a very successful film that wins awards, we'd like a mention or two in your acceptance speech. Just kidding. Maybe. Your career. Independent filmmaking isn't exactly something you're pushed towards at school. When you talk about careers, particularly when you reach your teens, you'll often hear teachers pushing more secure career paths. It's not that they don't believe that being an independent filmmaker isn't a career. It's simply because it can be a risky path to take. In Terry Green's article for Filmmaker, titled Independent Filmmaking, Passion or Profession, he talks about the various aspects of a filmmaker's career, exploring how exactly we should look at it, and whether or not we can actually make enough money from it to warrant calling it a profession. Independent filmmaking, as we know it, isn't what it once was, when stepping behind the camera meant you had arrived at a certain level and achieved a certain distinction in your career. Directing movies was once reserved for those who had made previous achievements in the industry and earned their way into the director's chair. In his quote, Terry Green makes a valid point, highlighting, as we did in our introduction, that the definition of the role has changed. Even in the anti-Hollywood age, the right of an independent filmmaker came from experience and expertise. You had to have achievements behind you in order to stand a chance. With the wider availability of film equipment, the dirt cheap to the most expensive equipment, ranging from low budget to Hollywood standard, it's easy to put yourself in the filmmaker's position, even if you have no experience whatsoever. We're not here to say you're any less of a filmmaker because you don't have the same experience as a small-time director working with a small studio, or even a top Hollywood director like Christopher Nolan. We're just pointing out that the goalposts have moved in the film industry, giving just about anybody with a willingness to learn the opportunity to become a filmmaker. Now, it's important to note this isn't an easy job. Regardless of what equipment you have and the script you have behind you, there's nothing to suggest you're definitely going to succeed. You can have all the tools, but if you don't have the appropriate skills to use them effectively, you unfortunately won't get far. Today, a handheld digital camera and home editing system is all you need to make a film and to call yourself a director. A few thousand dollars out of pocket and you're on your way. So, what does this actually mean for independent filmmakers? You might be asking. Well, as we discussed above, it's a lot easier for people to go out and try their hand at filmmaking. It's worth noting, too, that these may be people who, decades ago, would have never had the opportunity to. Due to the technology and smaller costs involved with production today, they are now able to give it a go. Terry Green makes an interesting counter-argument, stating that now there is so much out there in terms of volume, it has watered down the landscape, making it much harder to recognize actual talent. The current landscape of independent filmmaking, 
due to the sheer volume being pumped out on a daily basis, largely due to the world's huge population with access to film equipment, is allowing actual talent to go unrecognized as film after film get released to little to no recognition. Later, Terry Green goes on to explain how he's certain of one thing. The above has made it very difficult for people to define independent filmmaking as a genuine, viable occupation. It's easy to see his point. With so much competition out there, and knowing just how much work goes into a typical independent film, is there really any money to be made in the business? It appears unlikely, but that goes for the film industry in general. Until you find a way in, you're stuck just looking for a means of paying the bills. In the world of film, you have to persevere, and giving it time does not suggest it's never going to happen. Sometimes having patience is key, providing there's enough fire in your belly to keep you motivated. But we know it's hard to stay motivated when the money dries up and you're actively pursuing a career as an independent filmmaker. We have included the following quote from Terry Green not to discourage you from entering the world of independent filmmaking, but as a means of motivating you to prove him wrong. In this film economy, the best they independent filmmakers could hope for was admission into one of the hundreds of film festivals that have cropped up in recent years, where their visions might gain ground and their film careers might get launched. So, don't just reach for admission into one of those talked-about film festivals. Strive for admission in many. Strive to get your work noticed. Strive to make every decision you've made in your independent filmmaking career really worth it. Like we mentioned, the world of independent filmmaking is not an easy one, but providing you've got the stomach for it and you're willing to fight to express yourself creatively, project your vision, and inspire others, you'll already be well on your way to success.